Hi, my name is Shristi and welcome to day 23 of the 30 day Mean Stack Honolulu Challenge. Today we're going to pick up from where we left off yesterday. So when we when we closed off yesterday, we had just gone through the process of, um, of updating our customer details. So I'll just jump across to the customers list. Here's our list of customers. Um, and, and yesterday we, um, we, we had a go at changing um, one of our customers' names and then we changed it back and saw how the update process worked. Today we're gonna continue um, working on the, um, the update modal and we'll just look at what's left to close out um, this modal and, and get it to look like our wireframe. So if I jump back to our wireframes and um, just open up the update customer wireframe, uh, just starting from the top, let's break through and uh, make sure we've got everything we need to, um, to have this wireframe sort of working the way we want it to. Um, and once we've got that, we'll, um, we'll be able to move on to, um, to doing the, the new customer modal. So um, if we look at the very top, we've got uh, this, um, this heading at the top of the modal, which says update Anthony Stevens. And Anthony Stevens is obviously the name of this customer in the wireframe. So if we want to um, do something like that, um, yeah, we'll go over to our code and have a look at how that's done. But before we do that, let's just jump back to our app and see what we currently have. So at the moment, we have um, a heading of edit customer. So we wanted to change that to update Anthony Stevens. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. So just go across to our edit customer client view. Um, and what we're looking at is this modal title up the top here. So we want that to, um, to reflect the, um, the title over here. So I'll just make this one a little bit smaller. All right, cool. So we can see that and just move that across. Okay, so update customer, we're gonna say update because that's um, that's the first part of that sentence. Um, and then we wanna have this reference to the first name and the surname. So when we wanna reference um, uh, an Angular data field, we wanna use um, these these double um, brackets, so double curly brackets. And um, if you recall, when we were looking at first name, we used um, this reference of customer.firstname. So we grab that and plug that into a first set of curly brackets. Um, and next to that, we'll throw in another set of curly brackets with customer surname. All right, cool. So now we'd expect um, our modal title to say update um, the, the name of the, of the customer that we're dealing with. So I'll just save that and just jump back to our app and we'll just pop open the modal again. So now I've got update Peter Carlson because that's the name of my customer. So if I changed um, Peter's name to something else, so for example, let's say if we wanted to go, um, let's say we just wanted to be Carl, um, you can see that the name will change, um, the, the, the reflected name update um, actually is reflected in both places. And that's because we're mapped um, both fields to the same data model. So I'll just change that uh, back to Carlson, just cancel out of that. Okay, cool. Now let's have a look at what else we need to do. Um, we've got sort of first name, surname, suburb, and so on and so forth. So the fields are all kind of set up already for us. We have changed the location of the buttons. We've moved them down a little bit. So we do have a bit of space there to play with if we need to. Um, but there's sort of two things that I see here that I, that I want to um, look at in a little bit more detail. Firstly, we've got this, um, th this icon that's blue. And um, you know, we previously, um, in, a, in a previous video, we went through identifying how we use ng class to actually change the color of the icon depending on um, whether the referred um, is um, true or false. Um, now, we, you may have noticed if you played with that field that that actually isn't working at the moment. So if we go back and just open up Peter Carlson, if I try and click this field, nothing's going on. And the reason for that is similar to um, the details that we put up in the name, we don't actually have a, a reflection to the accurate data model that we want to use. So if we jump over to the code, we see that in the code where we've got this reference to the referred field um, in ng class. So we're saying, well, when we're pointing to this glyphicon, um, we, we want uh, text primary, so we want it to be blue when it's um, 
when it's actually when referred is true so when the tick box is checked or we want it to be text Jane danger when it's not checked so what we can do here is just have put in that reference to customer because that's the data model that we're working with so customer dot referred and customer dot um, not referred so if we then try that out um, that should now um, mean that our, um, our our icon is changing color when we select that box. So just have a quick look at that. And there you go. So you can see we've got this color sort of changing. Now that that sort of red color there, that that's not really the nicest um, color around. Um, and if we go back to our wireframe, um, this one is blue and that around aligns to primary sort of fairly fairly well. Um, but if we jump back to, for example, the create pages, we had this sort of pink kind of color here. Um, and we can easily set that up using a class. So we'll go ahead and, um, and plug that in. So go back to our code. And um, instead of text danger, I just change that to text pink. And I'll just copy that text pink and jump across to our CSS. And we'll just add in a CSS class. So text pink. Um, all we want to do is just say color equals pink. Now, if we want to know the exact sort of color of pink, we can use the, the color picker to do that. So I can just open up that color picker and go and just grab that pink. So it's that EC40. Uh, 7a if um, if that's what you choose um, we'll okay that and just go back to our app let that refresh and there you go so now we've got um, a bit of a bit of pink coloring going on as well so pink and blue um, colors that align a little bit closer to our um, in our wireframes um, now the last thing that I want to do um, when I'm styling this particular page is I want to make sure that at least one of the fields in this form is, is populated for this customer record. Otherwise, I'm going to have this sort of blank um, customer record sitting in the database and that's not very clean. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to make this surname field mandatory. So there has to be some data in surname in order to uh, save this customer's record. Um, and the way to do that is by making the field required. So we'll jump back to our codes. We'll go to edit customer client view and just go down to surname, which we've got here. And we can just go to the end and just put in required. Now there is a directive, an Angular directive for ng required as well. Um, and, and ng required actually allows you to um, put in a reference to a function or to another field. So for example, you might, um, you might have some business rules in your um, form, which, uh, which you might, might want to use to say that a particular field is required only when something else has already also been populated, for example. Um, and ng required is pretty powerful to do that kind of um, stuff with. So I'll just put in required um, and just say that. And that would just use um, our HTML validation to make sure that that works. And we'll just test that out. So let's go again with Peter. Um, so if I try and get rid of Peter's surname, you can see that the, that, that box is now red, whereas these ones are all sort of blue. That's telling me, hang on, there's something not right going on here. You need to do something about this. Now, the issue that we currently have is there's no um, validation stopping um, the modal window from closing um, even if I don't put in a surname. Um, and the reason for that is because we're calling two functions one after another. So we're calling the customer update, which would um, which would not proceed. Um, and, but we're also calling the OK, which would close uh, the modal window. Um, so there's, um, 
there's a there's a lot of different ways to do form validation and you could almost do a 30-day series on form validation alone and how that works but i'll show you two um, really kind of quick and simple ways to validate um, the form to make sure that it doesn't close if you haven't input uh, a surname so i just cancel that we we'll just so just go back to our edit customer client view and just go up to form and in this form, we're going to give this form a name so that we can refer to it. So we'll go form, uh, let's just call it update customer form. Okay, so we've got a reference to it. Um, what we can what what we can do with this now is we can just copy that name um, and we can go over to our client controller. And um, at the moment, we call the OK function at the point of hitting the OK and close um, button. Uh, so we're going to just put um, a little uh, bit of code around this to make sure that we don't close the window if we've got an issue with the form. And just really simply do, so we'll just say, if the customer update form is valid, so everything within the form is okay, only then would you go ahead and close the modal. Otherwise, there's no, there's nothing that's going to happen from um, from calling uh, this this particular function. Um, and the other thing that we can also do is if we jump back to the edit customer client view um, and just go all the way down to um, to our actual button. So the the button which has the the calling of the two functions. Just at the end of that, there's another thing that we can also do, um, and and this is to actually disable the button if the form and all the details in the form are not actually valid. So if there's any issues with the form, um, then we disable the button. And we can just do that using ng um, disabled. So ng disabled, and we just plug in here the form name and um, just do again the dollar sign, but this time instead of valid, we'll just refer to invalid. So we want it to be disabled if the form is invalid. So let's um let's go and just save that, have a quick look. So jumping back to our app, pop that open, and this time I'm just gonna remove Carlson. And you can see that the update and close button is disabled. Alright, so cancel that. That's um that's where I'm gonna leave it for today. Tomorrow we'll continue um progressing with our modals and We'll, um, we'll, we'll have a look at some directives as well. So we can't really go through 30 days of um, the mean stack and using Angular without creating our own directive. So we'll have a look at doing that tomorrow and then we'll jump to um, actually working on our new customer creation modal. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out bossable.com for more details and I'll see you tomorrow.